Hello, a very good morning, and what a beautiful day it is. Sun is shining, sky's blue, not a cloud in the sky. A nice way to start the morning, but even better to start the day with the Lord, isn't it? Great to be saved in these days when so many people are struck down by fear. But our confidence is not in ourselves, it's not in another man. Our confidence is God. So I just wanted to share a wee word with you, uh, which challenges me, and uh, I'm sure it'll challenge everyone else and get our mind off other things. I want to read, uh, well, let's pray first. That would be a good idea, a good place to start, isn't it? Father, we do thank you that this is the day the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your goodness and your love and your mercy and your hand upon us. And Lord, as we go through this pandemic, we pray for more of your grace, more of your strength, more of your wisdom, more of your comfort, more of your love to be poured, not only on us, but on those who are struggling at this time. Pray for the sick of the church, and we ask you to raise them up to full health and strength. Pray for those suffering with the virus, and we pray that you would heal them, those frontline workers, protect them and watch over them. For we ask it in the name that never fails, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, let me read for you from 1 Samuel 24. 1 Samuel 24, great scripture, and verse 17. And we read till verse 19. Uh, and this is the uh, situation where Saul is in the cave and David uh, could have taken him out for all the ill uh, he had paid towards David. It's an incredible story. And this is what we read in verse 17. You're more righteous than I, he said. You have treated me well. This is Saul uh, talking to David. But I have treated you badly. You have just now told me about the good you did to me. The Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. When a man finds his enemy, does he let him get away unharmed? May the Lord reward you well for the way you treated me today. Incredible scriptures. And basically, it's a story that many of us play out uh, from time to time in our lives. Let me ask you today, has anyone ever done you harm? I'm sure they have. And what, what is the first feeling that we have as human beings? Normally, unless of course we're super spiritual, it's how can we get them back? There is this forceful moment of vengeance that rises up in our hearts and we want to repay evil with evil. In fact, we, we stack up chips against the individual or individuals and we become uh, totally convinced that they deserve everything that's coming to them. It's the old adage where we're praying fire down in people who are evil or people that we believe are less holy than we are. And David's in exactly the same situation here. I remember hearing a story of a, a gentleman who had held many important positions in public life, who went to a friend in great, great anger over a real injury he received from a prominent politician. <laughs> My goodness, we would all want to attack our politicians at times, wouldn't we? Really, we should be praying for them. He was considering how to react resentfully in the most forceful, effective manner. And after relating the particulars to his friend, he asked if it would be manly to resent it. Yes, replied his friend, it would doubtless be madly to resent it, but it would be godlike to forget it. Manly to resent it, but godlike to forget it. We always have a choice when someone wrongs us. It's like a two dogged fight, you know. There's this dog gnawing at us, telling us to pay them back. And then there's this little, probably the best way to put it is, I have a Rottweiler who's a huge big dog. If he bit you, uh, you would never forget it. Thankfully, he doesn't bite. A Rottweiler's jaw power is the same as a shark, but they never fully use it. And then I have this other little thing. I'm not sure what it is. It's supposed to be Rebecca's dog, but it seems that I've adopted it. It's a miniature uh, Pomeranian 
Jack Russell. It's about four inches over the ground. And the enemy very often is like the Rottweiler. They seem strong and powerful, giving you a, a loud voice to get your own back. And then the other, the other little shouts, the little small Chihuahua, Pomeranian Jack Russell thing, that very often you can't hear because the the, the Rottweiler overpowers him. The, the evil voice over, overpowers the good. And the danger is that we hear the loud voice and fall in line and believe we have a justifiable cause or reason to get back at someone. Maybe you feel that way today. Who knows? Maybe this word is for you today. Maybe you feel someone's wrong you and you're about to get an evening. David is an incredible example. He chose to let God be his example. Isn't that an incredible place to be in our lives? Wouldn't we Wouldn't we all love to have that on our CV? Wouldn't we all love to say, well, we were, we were spiritual enough to let God deal with the situation. We didn't add to it and we didn't take away with it. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we did that? Uh, and I'm not saying that I'm spiritual, but I've been here many times. I was here a few years ago when I was wrongly accused. And I had to, to do all of my power not to try and get payback. Thank God I didn't. And I feel better for not doing that. When Saul entered a cave to attend to his needs, he didn't know that David and his 400 men were hiding in the recess of the cavern. David had him at a severe disadvantage. And by the way, David's men encouraged him to, to, to act. You might even get some of your friends and some of them good Christian friends telling you, yeah, you're right, go ahead. I would get them back. David had all of his friends, and these were good friends at this time, who were saying, David, seize the opportunity, take revenge on Saul. But David didn't listen to those voices. You see the loudness of the voices? David didn't listen. Sometimes it's better not to listen to the loudness. And look for the still, quiet voice of God in whatever pain and whatever situation you're going through. Rather than, rather than seeking to re, repay Saul for the evil he done him, he secretly cut off a piece of Saul's robe as, as proof of what he could have done and allowed the king to leave without knowing how close he had actually been to death. Only later in the, in the story as it develops did Saul realise how much mercy David had actually shown him. And I guess that's the key to this scripture, isn't it? Because God's way is always to show mercy rather than extract vengeance. It's always to show grace rather than judgment. That's why I, I, I don't buy into this adage that this pandemic's the judgment of God. Because God, at this moment in time, is into the business of showing mercy and, and, and showing grace. We read that in Romans 5 and 8, don't we? But God demonstrates his own love toward us, not as judgment, but his love towards us, not as vengeance. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even while we were God's enemies and, and, and even while we cursed God, even while we had no time for God, he had compassion for us. And we are to do likewise as Christians, aren't we? It's not easy, is it? He had compassion for us and he provided a way of salvation. I wonder, as I've said, are you thinking about getting even with someone? Here's my advice. Don't do it. Try God's way instead. Because God's way is always the best way. Return good for evil. Return good for evil. And I'm telling you this, someday you'll be glad you did it. We're all glad when we do it. We feel much better when we do it. It's so easy. It's so easy to get even. But wow, wow. It's so graceful to show good for evil. Evil for evil is man's way. Good for evil is always God's way. <coughs> it always has been and always will be God's way. May this little word bless you and challenge you today and have a wonderful day. Don't forget, if you need anything, you know where we are. I do miss you all. And if you know anyone wants added to the WhatsApp group, I know people are leaving. And try, 
if you're going to post something, make sure it's a God moment, you know, because if you're posting and someone's in work, it, their phone's going ding, 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 ding all day long, and it can be a wee bit irritating, can't it? So be careful when you're posting, make sure it's something that'll encourage them, because I noticed a few people have left, and they've probably left because of all the ding, dings all day long. Anyway, uh, if you need anything, you know where we are, you know anyone wants to be added, do, do ask their permission and then add them, and hopefully they'll get a wee encouraging, challenging blessed word each day may god bless you keep you and cause his face to shine on you have a wonderful wonderful day god is good isn't he amen